You know, sometimes when you're working with morons, you just have to prove the obvious, like, you know, the planet is fucking round, and, uh, you know, some of the most basic things, some people are still too stupid to understand that the planet is fucking round and not flat. I think Hero's one of those people. <laughs> okay, so then, who's the real victim? Uh. First, we need to figure that out. That's the first thing I said. You're the one who's been dragging us around in circles. Before anything, we have to identify the victim. Everything starts from there. Obviously, we know who it is. The tattoo. Tattoo on the right hand is probably what I'm going to use. If Kyoko really is still alive, then who died? <laughs> There's got to be some way to figure it out. I don't think so. The face was scorched beyond recognition. Okay, right. And there wasn't any description in the Monokuma file. Well, if we can't identify the body... Yes, we can. Ha ha! No, it's wrong. I'm getting better at the aiming and everything. I'm slowing stuff down now. It's working well. There was one clue left behind that we can use to identify the body. What? For real? If you're lying, you'll die a cruel and unusual death. Good, anything to get out of this fucking crazy-ass color room. Cruel <laughs> and unusual death? This I gotta see. She's just being stupid. Ignore them, Makoto. Tell us what you're talking about. The key to figuring out who it was is the tattoo on the back of her hand. Yep. Oh, yeah. The design's pretty strange, huh? Is this a dog? Her master must have made her get it to be like, you're my bitch. Seriously? They really did something that humiliating? No, that's not it. The identity of the victim is hidden within that tattoo. Oh, really? If you compare the tattoo to the other information we have, the victim's identity should become clear. Gotta be the file. Yep. That's it. I got it. The Fenrir Mercenary Corps. That's the name of the military group Mukuro Ikusaba belonged to. Okay, so to show that they're a member of the team, each soldier that joins the squad would get a tattoo representing Fenrir somewhere on their body. Fenrir? The image that represents Fenrir is... Hangman's Gambit! A wolf, duh. The wolf! The wolf! Now I understand. Ah! Complete, that was quick. So the representation of Fenrir is... A wolf. Fenrir, the wolf of Ragnarok. It's from Norse mythology. A huge, world-ending wolf beast. He's the child of the trickster god, Loki. And a female giant. Man, after all this time, we finally got a glimpse of the literary all-star. <laughs> a wolf tattoo. Then that means... Exactly. The body we found had a tattoo of a wolf. Which means that person must have once belonged to Fenrir. So it must have been Mukuro. Aha! Uh -huh. What? Aha! Uh -huh. oh, hold on. Aha! Uh -huh. Isn't she the one that was behind this whole thing? <laughs> you sound surprised, but you're absolutely right. Yes, indeed. The trial this time is to solve the murder of Mukuro Ikusaba. Are you saying the mastermind is dead? Now we have to have a cool last trial? No. It means we were wrong in thinking that Mukuro was the mastermind at all. But I mean, being the ultimate despair seems like a pretty mastermindy title to me. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't have been thinking of her as the ultimate despair in the first place. After all, looking at her profile, I didn't see anything that would fit such a description. All it said was that she was the ultimate soldier. That's true. If I remember correctly, that other information came from... Kyoko. That's what you told Makoto, right? So that means... 
Kyoko got it wrong? Hmm, who was she? Who was Mukuro Ikusaba? She's been gone this whole time, and when she finally turns up, she gets killed. Usually, when there's a scene where an important character dies, it has a lot more detail. <laughs> so you're saying she wasn't an important character? Which would mean she was the same as us. Just another participant. Then, who's the real mastermind? It must have been the Hope's Peak Academy headmaster, after all. No, the headmaster has nothing to do with it. But how can we trust that? We already know your information about Mukuro was wrong. My information was not wrong. Okay, okay! We're in the middle of a trial right now! Figuring out who killed Mukuro is first and foremost! Please limit all future prattle, chatter, and chit-chat as much as possible! Jeez, a strict teddy bear. Fine. <laughs> Uncovering the identity of the Mastermind will have to wait. But remember this. No matter what happens, we will find out who you really are. I stake my family name on it. I have officially decided to completely ignore all such attempts at provocation. <laughs> now then, just so nobody's confused, let me state this one more time for the record. The reason we're having a class trial is because a murder among the students has taken place. Hammer that point straight into your big old brains! What you're saying is that both the victim and the culprit are part of the student body? Then, <clears throat> one of us killed Mukuro? Aha! Wait, no! There's a chance that there's some mystery 17th person who's been hiding all along! Nope! There are only 16 students in total that have been taking part in these events! Seriously? Then, one of us killed Mukuro? Who did it? Who's the killer this time? Get a hold of yourself. We've already narrowed down the list of possible suspects. Huh? I'm sure you realize who I'm talking about, right, Makoto? Who the evidence points to? Based on what we know, they're killing me two suspects, Makoto and Kyoko. I got it! You've narrowed it down to Kyoko and me, right? Why do you say that? Allow me to explain. Just after nighttime last night, I went to the garden, so I can confirm that at that point, there was no dead body there. So, the murder must have taken place after I left the garden. However, Hiro, Toko, Hina, and I were in the gym the entire time. The gym? That's right. The four of us were there trying to dismantle Monokuma. The whole time, we were very careful not to go anywhere alone. We even went to the bathroom in pairs. I'm hypothesizing in my head what happened. I think that this Makuro was actually going to try to kill Makoto in his sleep. And somehow Kyoko snuck into the room and attacked Makuro and stopped it. And then ended up dragging the body out to the garden or something like that. All of which is to say, the four of us all have alibis. The only ones without alibis... Are me and Makoto. That's why you're able to narrow down the list of suspects. Exactly so. So the only suspects now are me and Kyoko. Damn it, I can't let this stand. Somehow I have to clear my name. Um... I have something oh. I'd like to say regarding the whole alibi thing. Are you thinking of raising an objection? Well, before that, I just want to try and get a better idea of what time the murder took place. Doing that might reveal some kind of clue. Whatever you want, somebody go ahead and help him out. Me and Byakuya can both confirm that the body wasn't in the garden at... Well, it was after nighttime for sure. I'd say it must have been around 10 o'clock. So the murder must have happened after 10 p.m. Then I guess we can say the time frame for the murder was between then and when we found the body? Oh, but what time did we find the body? The one who saw the body first was Toko, right? And she went to go get the pickaxe. What time was the body discovered? I got it! The body must have been discovered at 9 a.m., since that's when Toko went to get the pickaxe. Right. Now then, Toko, what time is it? When we left the gym, it was just before 9 o'clock, so it's probably 9 on the dot now. Go get the pickaxe and be back here by 9.01. He's right. It had to be around then. So we can be totally sure the murder happened sometime between 10 at night and 9 in the morning. 
For me, I was already asleep before nighttime hit, so I don't have an alibi after 10 o'clock. But I'm sure I met up with everyone else before 9 this morning. We ran into each other in the dining hall, right? That was around... Oh, yeah! Right around 7.30. I remember checking right before I went in, so I'm totally sure about it. Which means from 10 p.m. to 7.30 a.m., you don't have an alibi. The murder happened between 10 p.m. and 9 a.m., and I don't have an alibi from 10 p.m. to 7.30 a.m. Okay, then looks like the game has begun. If I can't provide an alibi for that period, then I just have to prove the murder didn't happen during the time that I don't have an alibi. To do that, I have to make it clear when the body ended up in the garden. Oh, okay. It's probably going to be the exploded body analysis or the sprinkler. We've established a time frame for the murder. It took place somewhere between 10 o'clock at night right. and 9 o'clock in the morning. Yep, and Makoto doesn't have an alibi for most of that time. Yeah, from 10 o'clock to 7.30. That's more than enough time to commit murder, I should think. So Makoto, if you have any huh. objections, now would be the time. There's something that happens in the garden at the same time, yeah. The sprinklers. That's what I gotta use against it here. I have to bring up the sprinklers, I guess. Okay. 